It was Zach North, and I just jumped off the porch with Dirty Glove Bassett. You know the vibes. Tell your new nigga I got that thumb with me. All my nigga got bands and bust that drum with me. Hold up. Are you dumb? All right. Today we got Zach North jumping off the porch with us today. How you feeling, man? I feel good, man. I feel blessed to be here. You know, I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to be on the platform, man. No problem, my dog. It's yeah. a pleasure to have you on the porch with us today, man. For sure, bro. For sure, man. Hey, I've been wanting to jump off the porch for a minute. So. Hey, you've been off that porch for a long time now. Hey, a long time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, drive, bro. I'm used to it now, bro. I used to live down here for a little bit, man. So to me, bro, hey, that shit feel like home, bro. I got a, I got a little tattoo on my body that symbolizes that drive. So, hey, I love to make the drive. Hey. You know, it's just like home away from home, for real, for real. That's real. How long is the drive? Uh, from my crib specifically, close to five hours. Probably, probably about four hours and 40. So what's going through your mind as you prepare yourself for those long rides? Hell yeah, I get to digest music. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't much It ain't much to uh, to prepare for. Usually when I'm coming down here to Atlanta, bro, it's, it's business opportunity, so that shit feels good. Yeah. Uh, to be honest with you, though, shit, if I got to ride with somebody, shh, boy, I get a little anxious because uh, you don't never know who going to have the ox. You don't know what you're going to be listening to. <laughs> you know, shout out to my manager, though. He played good music sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, say, man. Yeah. So what made you leave Charlotte to go to Atlanta? opportunity man so shout out teddy p ted pop off man he dope dope ass super producer man out, out of here in atlanta man he from louisiana he moved out here when i came out here um i came to pop off my music career and um and i ended up meeting him and we just formed this relationship bro and since then it's been up bro yeah yeah so music that's real yeah but you can't leave home for too long so what made you say you know what i'm going back home my ki my kids, bro. So my my oldest son, um, I had missed about two years of his life, and you know anybody that know me know like I'm real hands on daddy. So I I've seen my kids like almost every day except for those two years, unless I'm traveling. You know what I mean? Um, it's a big priority, and, and and in those times, bro, I was I was working a day job, and I may have an off day on Monday, and they have another off day on Friday. Bro, I get off work on Sunday night, drive all the way up, and let's say, let's say I had to be back at work. I was off on uh, Monday and they had to be back at work on Tuesday. I go spend all day on Monday up there, wake up Tuesday morning, drive back to Atlanta, work all day, and then I be off on Wednesday. I turn right around, drive Tuesday night back up to North Carolina, and then the next day come back to Atlanta. So. That, that's what it looked like that's right there. That's some real shit. Yeah. So how important would you say fatherhood is to you? Oh shit, bro! It's 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 everything, and 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 I sum it up in terms of legacy, bro. Um, I got a stencil of of what to do in life, but I didn't really get a blueprint. You yeah. know what I mean? And you know, I've been spending my whole life trying to lay out the blueprint, and um, I'm either going to change the course of my entire family uh, trajectory, or I'm gonna die trying. You know? For sure. So so it's everything, legacy, bro. That's real. Yeah. So before we dive into where we at now, let's take it back to the roots of this legacy, right? So how yeah. would you describe coming up in Charlotte, North Carolina? Bro, so I ain't even gonna sit here and cat with you. I'm not originally from Charlotte. Uh, uh, Charlotte, Charlotte's home. It's a, it's, it's a couple hours from where I'm from. I'm from the country, bro. I'm, I'm from Western North Carolina. Small town. Everybody talk. Everybody listen. You know, somewhere in there, the truth lies. Somewhere in there, a lie stands <laughs> you know what i'm saying that, yeah that, that that's where i'm from man everybody talking about you um but on the flip side man it, you know it ain't so negative because you know i kind of grew up in an environment where i ain't have to lock my doors when, when we left it, and, and if somebody went in your shit you know who went in your shit you right know what i'm saying like one or two phone calls so i mean it, it, it was definitely cool but my childhood bro i grew up real poor bro um and I ain't saying that no disrespect to my mom, no disrespect to my family, because my grandfather and them, you know, they, they had bread, but my parents, they was trying to get bread. You know what I'm saying? So it was it was times where, bro, we ain't had no heat. 
Um, we, we had no water. Sometimes the power was out and we'd take food and put it in the snow to keep it cold. So it rained, it rained inside my crib. Like I used to wake up in the mornings, bro, and step out of bed, bro, and put my feet down in like three, four inches of water, bro. If, 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 if I was lazy and my clothes was in the floor, bro, clean clothes that I used to get my ass beat for doing, uh, I'll pick them shits up, wring them out, put them in the dryer, take them out in 30, 40 minutes and go to school. And, and nobody really kind of knew what that struggle was like for me. You know what I'm saying? Um, so yeah, it, it, it was definitely humble beginnings, bro. Um, but it's why, I, it's, it's, it's why I'm the way I am now. That's real shit. Yeah. So when would you say you decided to jump off the porch? Early, bro, like, like, like at an early age, and I don't, my jump off the porch ain't what everybody else jump off the porch is. My jump off the porch means just chasing the bag, you know what I'm saying, by, by any means necessary, you know what I'm saying? I ain't, I ain't even jump off that, man. I slid off that moment. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, bro, I've been, um, I've been working since I was in middle school, bro. My, my daddy had got out of prison, started a cleaning business, and, bro, I'm talking 10, 11 years old, I'm going to work with him, bro pushing these machines together. And now, now that I look back, rest in peace, my daddy, but that nigga was hustling me, bro. I was working all day, he was paying me $5, bro. Oh. <laughs> but you know, it, um, it taught me a lot, bro. I went from that, doing the Little Caesars, and you know what I'm saying, I, I, I dibbled and dabbled in, 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 certain, in certain shit that didn't really pan out for me. Uh, you know what I'm saying, some made a little quick change here and there, but um, my path really just been like, Busting my ass on some, really some nine to five type shit, yeah. but, but but on but but in the most finesse way possible, bro. Sometimes I look in jobs and I'm like, bro, I don't know how I got this job, bro. But, yeah, you know, that what that's what my off the porch kind of look like, bro. That's real shit though. Yeah, at least you ain't choose to be broke. Hell no. Bro. That's the most important lesson right there. Hell no. Now I mean, hell, I've been broke before. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, technically, I'm gonna be real with you again, bro. Like. Shit, I still feel broke. You know what I'm saying? Like I can't do what I want to when I want to do it. And to me, that that ain't it, shit. You that ain't freedom. Yeah, that ain't free, bro. Yeah. I feel like that right now. Like still partially like a slave type. You know what I mean? So yeah, I feel you on that. So when would you say you decided to turn a new leaf and try music, or where would you say your inspiration for music came from? Mm. Really, my family, bro. So. Um, damn, bro, I talk about my daddy a lot, bro. This man impacted my life both positively and negatively, but his side of the family is like extremely talented, like musical, you, you know what I mean? And um, that, that kind of brushed off onto me. No disrespect to my, um, my siblings, I got four of them. I don't know what happened to the other two, but two of us, uh, <laughs> two of us got that musical gene and um, Man, I just ran with it. So, like I said, he was locked up. And then when he got out, you know what I'm saying? Real street, real street nigga, bro. And he was just handling me like that, bro. And it was, I was a mama's boy, bro. So that shit was tough. I hated that nigga, bro. So, you know what I'm saying? I just decided to write it down. I used to write a lot. And uh, I wrote this song called I Hate You. And um, when I recorded it back on, 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 the, on a little player and, and heard it, I was like, yeah. That's what I'm finna do. <laughs> so then I start singing to girls on the phone. I start um, sending sending little songs to people, and everybody's like, "Bro, you trash." I'm like, "You gonna see, you know?" So yeah, that's real. Yeah. So when would you say you decided to take it serious full time? This year. And you know, I say that because I'm hard on myself, right? I've been I've been grinding for a few years now, but it's a difference, bro. Whenever you you say, yeah, I want to do music. And like, you believe you dope. Other people believe you dope, but you don't believe you're going to be successful. You don't, you, you don't feel like you dare. You don't feel like you deserve to be there. And so in, in 2022, actually, bro, 2021, that's when I'm gonna back up. I'm gonna say 2021. We did House of Blues, bro, with um, Travis Porter. We, we, we opened for Travis Porter and some other like street exec artists. And bro, we killed that shit. You know, I'm talking about killed it to the point where we went back. They was like, oh, nah, you you got to go right before the headliner because we can't let nobody follow you. In that moment, after that show, that shit clicked. 
and, I, and, and just seeing the crowd reaction, signing autographs, hearing people say, man, your song touched me. And this was a fun song, you know what I'm saying? They're like, man, your song touched me, I rock with it. I'm like, what? Literally, when I left off of that stage, bro, that shit clicked and I was like, oh shit, I'm finna lock in. Yeah. So I had this whole plan for 2022. I talked to my manager, I'm like, I'm telling you, bro, as soon as the new year turn, I'm balls to the wall. And um, it's been going hard all year long, bro. Yes, hard yeah. like eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, putting like <laughs> <laughs> everything in it. Hey, shit. that's you know a part of that grind, my boy. Yeah. 100%. So prior to that House of Blues show, yeah, I know you had more moments where you, you know what I'm saying, the stars were aligning. So let's talk about when the first record you knew of yours was the one. Bro, uh, I don't even know if I've had that moment yet, bro, where I just feel looked, like that yet. I don't even feel like that yet, bro. I'm so hungry right now. I, I, and I'm so hard on myself, bro. I'm a perfectionist. So I listen to my, my work right now and I'm like, it's songs that I haven't released where I'm like, mm-hmm. Yeah, so I, I definitely put out a song called I Don't Fuck With You, and mm. everybody around me was like, yo, this the one. And then that's really when the city of Charlotte started saying, oh shit, you know, you like that. And that record kind of caught steam. Mm -hmm. um, and then after that, bro, I, I dropped Are You Dumb this year. Shout out Power 98 back in Charlotte. You know, they, they heard the record, shout out Butterfingers, heard the record, and he like, oh, you got you one. You know what I'm saying? Shout out Shaq for, for doing that record with me. Um, but even when, even when I did that record at first, I was like, oh, this is dope. But it was a whole different vibe whenever I'm riding in the car and I randomly turn the radio on and I hear me doing the drops. I hear my song come on like, oh, this shit a different ball game. You know what I'm saying? So I, I would say for the sake of the question, are you dumb? But in my soul, I ain't had that one yet. When I get that one and I'm playing on air radio station and I'm right, when I pull up to a stoplight yeah. and I hear them playing my shit, then I'm gonna say, yeah. What do you feel like it yeah. takes for an artist to receive that type of, you know what I'm saying, point though? Get to that point. What do you feel it would take to get to that point? No cap, money. And a lot of people don't wanna talk about that, man. Um, nowadays, everybody relying on antics and doing crazy shit just to go viral. Uh, but not a lot of people go viral. It's, it's not as many as people think it is. It's actually very rare. It's strategic as hell. It's, yeah, bro. It's strategic, bro, and consistent. And so I would say it, it definitely takes money, man. So whatever you're doing to get money, invest that shit into yourself as an artist. And outside of that, you know, I like to say this thing where, bro, control the controllables. And the controllables that you can, that you can control are be consistent, put your shots up in the gym. Your shots up in the gym is writing when ain't nobody looking, perfecting your flow, perfecting your, your tone, your, your, your melodies, whatever it is, bro, you gotta be consistent with that shit, bro. And you gotta, you gotta go hard. If you can look to your left and your right and you feel like somebody's outworking, outworking you, you ain't going hard enough. And I can say right where I'm at now, there's nobody to my left and my right that's, that's outworking me. And yeah. that's the difference, like I, I know that. That's real shit. Yeah. So what would you say it is that you want listeners to take from your music? That I got something to talk about. Um, you know, the songs that I release, they've been, they've been fun. They've been singles. Um, you know, they've been, I'll tell you right now, my end goal is to get a major bag. I'm going major. I'm going global. Um, so I, I ain't, for all those backpackers out there, it's like, oh, he's selling out. And I'm telling you now, ain't no sellout. That's the end goal. And I, what I want you to, to take away from that is like me, me, me making songs first. I'm a songwriter first, so I need everybody to know, oh, he can make a hit record. Because that's, that's what labels that's what, and find investors, that's what they want to know. You know what I'm saying? Can, can you make a song? So I showed that. But even within those songs, there's bars, there's gems. And so as over, over this next 12 months, as I give more music, Oh, you gonna hear that. Like right now, music all about the beat, it's all about melody, catchy shit, but I think we in an interesting place where a lot of people yearning for connectivity and relatability and storytelling and, and bars, and I'm finna pipe up. That's real. Yeah. So the most important question I got for you. Yeah. What the fuck is going on with the mask? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, what the fuck is going on with the mask, man? 
perfect. Going off the last question, shit, like, labels, fans, groupies, anybody, they, they, they looking to know, does your image line up with how you sound? They looking to see how can we market you? Do you look young enough? Do you look old enough? Do you look, you know what I'm saying? Are you, are you black? Are you white? Are you yellow? Are you straight? Is you gay? Is you, all these different like boxes they trying to put you in from a marketing standpoint. Um, and I feel like creatively what I do is bigger than all those questions. It's, it's, it's 9 billion people in the world. I know there's at least a million people who have my story. And that's why I put this mask on because I, I, I want people to focus on the creativity, the creative that I am. This mask, you look at it, it's either creative, creative as fuck or you feel like it's, 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 it's a gimmick. I can assure you it, it ain't a gimmick. You know what I'm saying? On, on top of that, it's marketability, bro. It's longevity. I, I, could, I, could die to, I could die today, bro. And this mask can be turned into a 4D character and still be put out. Hell, you just had a damn AI character signed to Capital. Got dropped, but you know. Yeah, fuck that nigga. Yeah, fuck <laughs> it, right. Like, real niggas here really working. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, the, the the masses, but to me, it's, it's it's marketability, bro. It's privacy. It's just it's just bigger than appearance, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's real shit. Yeah. What inspired that idea, though? What did that day? Did you ain't just wake up one day? He's like, you know what? I'm gonna put a mask on. Matter of fact, yeah. I'm gonna make sure this motherfucker look pee as hell, this creative as hell. Yeah. Like, what made you say, you yeah. know what? I'm finna go ahead and put my mask on, but I'm finna put my mask on like this. Yeah, I'm finna throw that sauce on there, that yeah. drip. Bruh, so two conversations kind of really sparked it. I was in the barbershop one day. There's a little, little young cat in there, man. Oh, I'm gonna rap, I'm gonna do this. You know, you look at him, you can tell he ain't had no money, he ain't got no image. And everybody's saying, bro, you don't look like, you don't look like this, you don't look like that, telling him what he gonna rap about because how he look, that shit stuck with me. Then I had a, a former business partner that I used to work with, um, and, and, and we still cool, we still tight. But we ain't see eye to eye on far as how you should dress, what you should look like. Like, you should cut slits in your eyebrows. You shouldn't cut slits in your eyebrows. You know what I'm saying? So after that, I was like, bro, it's gotta be a way where that conversation is irrelevant. And then, bro, I was sitting there, I was watching the awards. I think it was like the VMAs or something. And bro, I seen Daft Punk come out. I don't know, I don't know what they was doing. I can't remember back, but bro, it just hit me. I'm like, hold on. Why can these other genres that's not a part of my culture do this shit and make so much money, so much merch, so much, to get so much love. And then even in the culture, you look back at like MF Doom, I believe that's why he was like underground was because of the mask. I don't, I don't know if he wanted to stay underground. I don't know if they didn't know how to take it you know, above ground or jump off the porch with that shit. But for me, I, you know, if you know me, I'm I'm all in or I'm all out. So when I got the when I got the idea, I'm like, yeah, I'm all in on this shit. That's real shit. Yeah. Let's talk about how I heard you on Clubhouse, man, chopping it up with some goats and shit. You play some music. <laughs> and they were fucking with it. Yeah, yeah. So talk yeah. about locking in with Mace, man. Yeah, man. That 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 shit was wild, bro. Like, you know, Mace is iconic, you know what I'm saying? We talking, bro. These boys on here with the matching jump shoots, blowing air and shit, <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, Mace iconic. And not, not only Mace, it was like Wack 102 and Wack behind like the Tatiana record. So really to hear them two that's like knee deep in the game, hear, hear my radio, Are You Dumb? Shout out Shaq again. Um, and just immediately say, oh yeah, you got you one. It, it felt good. For most people, I ain't even gonna speak for most people, for some people, it probably would have been validation. For me, me and my manager, like, we got hyped together, but then it was like, we know, we, we know this shit though. We, we know this though, you know what I'm saying? Like, what we doing, it ain't a, do you got it? It ain't a, are you gonna make it? It's, it's when, when you gonna make it? When is the world gonna get to know that you got it? You know what I'm saying? So, it, it was a definitely a dope opportunity and, um, you know, one day, whenever I come across him, I'm gonna shake his hand and, 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 and appreciate the compliment, man. That's real shit. Yeah. So besides music, what else would you say you're working on right now? 
besides music? I already talked about fatherhood. I talked about legacy. So, you know, I'm going to come back to what drives all of that. And that's, get, that's getting money, get, get, getting money always, um, you know, looking at different, different avenues. So besides just being an artist, I signed myself. So, you know, we, we started a label, you know, learning, learning the game inside out. And we also signed another artist that, you know, I'm in the process and intricately helping develop and, and, and get her craft out. She do R and B music. Um, shout out V that's V X X, uh, fire. And that's, that's, that's really the biggest things that I'm working on, man. That's, that's my life right now. That's real spill, man. Yeah. Stay humble, stay grounded, Zach. You go on the way, man. Just it's on the way. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Zach North, man. Any last words and shout outs? Any last words or shout outs? Hell yeah. I'm gonna shout myself out. I'm the go- no, I'm just <laughs> I'm just messing with y'all, man. Everybody watching this right now, take a lot of courage to do this music thing. Take a lot of courage to be consistent, to put your craft on the line. You gotta be vulnerable to do that. And it's gonna be times where you feel like Looking back, it's gonna be times where you wanna quit. It's gonna be times where your team members walk out on you. It's gonna be times where you have new team members. The only thing you can keep doing is going. And then it reaches a point where you've came too far and you can't turn back. Keep going. And that's what I would tell anybody, no matter what dream that is. That's real shit, man. Zach North, we appreciate having you on the porch today, gang. Yeah, no doubt. Say your new nigga, I got that thumb with me. All my niggas got bands and bust that drum with me. Hold up, are you dumb? Got a whole 